Okay, so in the last video, we talked about the SOP industry and how it is currently in shambles, but not so the SOP racing. SOP racing is doing much better and this is something that I definitely want to talk about in this video. We are following all these races all around the world and the rate of participation is actually amazing. I mean, do you guys see those SOP festival type races in Europe? like the SOP Alps Trophy the last weekend. The SOP Alps Trophy in Austria actually had over 400 athletes. According to the Austrian news channel that I saw a little piece about it, they had over a thousand people over the weekend. So, hello, yes, people are paddling. People are loving the SOP sport. Maybe they just don't like to buy as much as they used to. I don't know, but the enthusiasts are there. As much as I love the SOP race sport, we have one problem and that problem we're gonna address today. It is how the sport is so fragmented, diversified and basically, frankly, all over the place. If it wasn't for the SOP world rankings from Tibor Hasuyo that unifies the sport actually, we would not know where to put all these athletes and what kind of rankings. We've been talking about this for gosh who knows how long. Different associations, different world titles, different world championships. It keeps just going and we have one central place where we actually have a ranking but there's even a problem with that. And there is one thing that I have never understood over the last 14 years I've been doing this. Why the heck can't this SUP athlete let's not get together, get an association going, agree on the races they want to support and race in and then make those races their own. And don't tell me just because I'm proposing some sort of a pro tour that this would jeopardize the amateur paddlers and the inclusivity of this whole thing because it doesn't. Just because you're participating in a pro tour doesn't mean an amateur can stand right next to you and paddle along with. You're just going to be in two different rankings. And even if so, an amateur happens to be the pro at a race, well maybe you can throw him a wild card or something for another race. However, it really bothers me that we can't have all these paddlers in the same tour on the same weekend in the same spot over the course of time competing against one another like every other normal sport does. A tour with a grand finale at the end of the year something oh wait wait a second I forgot that was supposed to be the APP tour Right. Well, I guess the APP tour, I don't know, actually I don't even guess, because since the India sub festival thing, this tour has gone silent and there is some unconfirmed date in September in Spain for an event, for a race, and then that's about it. And then you have a sub surf event in the Canaries, and other than that, God knows what these guys are doing. So where are the paddlers? Where is the voice of the paddlers saying we gonna need an association, we're gonna call the shots here, we're gonna make the rules, we're gonna sanction these races, and we're gonna agree on where we participate. Why can't that not happen? We have created a patchwork in SUP that is so all over the place that I don't even know how this sport is supposed to get unified. In some countries it's all about the surfing associations and in some countries it's all about the ICF. And for me as media all I can do is follow the sub world ranking, get you guys a top 10 list per week, see how the ups and downs are going, but even there Actually, as of this week, I started to implement an average point per race because if somebody is on top of the list with seven races and somebody is right behind them with four races and their points difference is maybe three, four hundred points, if you look at the average score, the person in second place is much better than the person in first place. So we're lacking a little bit of accuracy there. So I've been proposing and I've been seeing this for so many years. We need an investor in this sport who gives us a tour throughout the year. An elite tour, not that the amateurs can participate, they can come to the same event and paddle along, but they're not in the elite tour. Have the elite tour with a real decent prize money and actually pay it 
and follow a set schedule. There are hundreds of hungry kids, we've seen it in Austria, that want to paddle. You could create a qualification series for them underneath at numerous all sorts of different races and just have that as an entry into an elite tour. The ISA, for example, has a qualification process to go to their event through the respectful countries. The ICF made it themselves rather easy. They just decided everybody can show up, but there is a little bit of a shortcut if you want. You can participate in sanctioned races throughout the year and you move up in the heats and you don't have to show up on Thursday before the weekend to qualify yourself into the final events. But bottom line, Anybody can come and you know what people come over a thousand people in Thailand that speaks volumes So the people are there the people want to paddle we just lack a decent structure and we lack a Concrete path for paddle juniors who say I want to be a paddler. I want to move up We owe these young kids a path to success to show them this is what you gotta do, this is how you get to the top. Whether this whole top is gonna make money or not is completely secondary at this point. I'm knee deep in the surf world and I see so many kids that wanna be pro surfers and the money in surfing is also not particularly there in abundance. So SCP people out there, makers and shakers of this, can we organize something like this? Can we pound something like a PGA or a WSL out of the ground? Something reliable, something with races and a good broadcast. Who's out there? Who's got the money? Who wants to invest in the sport? And with enough clicks and likes, we're gonna see you guys in the next video.